We have a whole kingdom in which we rule alone. Can do what we choose, be wise or ridiculous, or sure easy, conventional or odd. But when we step out of that kingdom, when we come out of our kingdom, our personal liberty of action becomes qualified by other people's liberty. I have to fit in with other people's liberty and other people have to fit in to my individual liberty. I might uh, like to practice on the trombone from midnight till three in the morning. You can see this musical wind instrument. If I take this instrument and go, see, if I went on to the top of Everest to do it, I could please myself. Yes, if you can look at the uh, Mount Everest there. If I go stand at the uh, summit of the Everest and play from midnight 12 to 3, no one is going to question me. But if I do it in my bedroom, my family will object. And if I, if I do it out in the streets, the neighbors will remind me that my liberty to blow the trombone must not interfere with their liberty to sleep in quiet. Yes, just think of a while, think for a while. If I do it in the midnight in my bedroom, my family members will shout at me because I am interfering in the liberty of my family members, disturbing their sleep. If I go do that in the street, I am interfering in the liberty of the common people living in the street, which I cannot do that, which I cannot do. So there is a limit to use our individual private liberty. We have our kingdom and we can have a boundary for that and we can do anything without asking other man's permission. But when we step out of that kingdom, when we step out of that and come into other person's liberty area, we have to curtail our liberty so that we do not disturb or interfere into other people's liberty. There are a lot of people in the world and I have to accommodate my liberty to their liberties. We are all liable to forget this and unfortunately we are much more conscious of the imperfections of others in this respect than our own. Yes. There are a lot of people in the world, not only me, and I have to fit in with my liberty to their liberties to have or to enjoy the social order. We are all responsible and liable to forget this. And unfortunately, we are much more conscious of the imperfection of others. We are not concentrating on the imperfection of ourselves, on the individual liberty or self-analyzing. Rather, we are much conscious of the imperfections of others in this respect than our own. A reasonable consideration for the rights or feelings of others, yes, the foundation of social conduct. We have to, we have to reasonably consider for the rights and feelings of others. And that is what the foundation of a social conduct. If we don't understand the rights and feelings of others, if we don't give a place, if we don't consider it, definitely there is a social anarchy social lawlessness it is in the small matters of conduct in the observance of the rules of the road that we pass judgment upon ourselves and declare that we are civilized or uncivilized every small matters of our conduct in observing the rules of the road do we stop when there is red signal do we wait when there is yellow signal do we proceed when there is green signal or we follow the rules, all the rules of the road? We have to judge upon ourselves. We have to pass judgment upon ourselves and declare 
find out, realize, understand whether we are civilized or uncivilized. The great moments of heroism and sacrifice are rare. Forget about that. Those are rare things. We do some heroic things or giving, um, uh, uh, giving up something for a sacrifice for the sake of others. Those things are very rare. But it is the little habits of commonplace intercourse. In our day-to-day -day life, wherever we go, whether we follow in uh, the rules of the road, in every little habits of commonplace, where people come, where we uh, mingle in the society, that make up the great sum of life. Every little habit, every little thing that we do, we must understand the, the rights and feelings of others over, the, over ourselves. Instead of pointing finger at others, let's analyze whether we are civilized or uncivilized. And every action of commonplace intercourse, that means if every person comes in, in the social, in the society, there we make the great sum of life and sweeten or make bitter the journey. The thing we do, we can make either bitter the journey or we can sweeten the journey. How we behave, observing the rules of the road, is more important than finding the other person's imperfection in respect to obeying the rule of the road. So we should not be like this old lady, rather we have to be passing judgment on ourselves whether we behave in a civilized or uncivilized way, whether we are whether I can, I can ask myself if I am causing anything for the social anarchy or am I playing a role in obeying the rule of the road in creating social order. Let's obey the rules of the road and create perfect social order Let's not use our personal liberty to affect the other people's liberty, to affect the other people's liberty. That would end up definitely in social lawlessness or anarchy. May God bless us to be a role in creating social order. Thank you.